You are all sons of light and sons of day. Now, the first thing I want you to look at, look at verse five. Look at the look at the adjective all. That's also there in the original text. You are all sons of light and sons of day. Now, why is that important? Paul is making it very clear here that if you are in Christ, you are a son of light. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the faith. It doesn't matter your position in the church. It doesn't matter how much maturity you have gained. If you are in Christ, you are a son of light. It is not something you have to gain for yourself. It's something he's done for you if you truly are a believer. I mean, look at verse 14. He says, he says, we urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Even these that are mentioned here, the unruly. The faint hearted and the weak, if they are truly in Christ, they are sons of light. Now, what does that mean? This phrase is a Hebraic phrase. It's very, very common when you hear sons of son of son of wickedness, son of Belial. It denotes and, and for the lack of a better word, I'm going to use this word. It denotes a, almost what we would consider a, gen, a genetic relationship as the relationship a child would have with its father. And the idea here is this. God is light. And you, by the work of the Holy Spirit, you have become a child of God. And according to Second Peter, chapter one, verse four, it has been imparted to you. A likeness. A participation in this divine nature. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about the phrase that has become so common, the phrase born again. You have been regenerated. You have been changed. You have become a new creature. And that creature, what is characteristic about it? It is a creature that manifests, that is filled with light. Now, let, let's go on. I want you to get an idea of this. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It says, for God who said light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Now, this is what has happened to you in creation, which is one of if some people would say the greatest demonstration of the power of God in creation, he spoke into darkness and there was light. And then he looks at the believer and he says the same thing. This one who did this, this one with this tremendous power, he has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. How is a man saved? How is a man born again? It requires a supernatural work of the spirit that is either equal with and I feel like greater than the power of God that was manifested on the day of creation. God spoke through the gospel. God spoke into your heart, into the darkness, the blackness, the depravity of your heart. And he said, let there be light. And when he did that, you were changed. You became something different than you were before. Look what he says in Ephesians chapter five, verse eight. For you were formerly darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Now, his language is very precise. Listen to what he's saying. He doesn't say you were formerly dark. He doesn't use the locative and say you were formerly in darkness. That's not what he says. He says you were formerly darkness. You were darkness. It was a part of who you were. It was your nature. You were darkness. But then he says but now you are light. He doesn't say you're in light. 
He doesn't, he's not talking here about walking in light. He's talking about something much more than activity or deeds. He's talking about nature or character. And what he's saying is you are now light in the Lord. Prior to coming to Christ, we were by nature children of wrath and sons of disobedience. Now, having come to Christ because of the work of Christ, because of the work of God through the spirit in us. We're now by nature sons of light and we are now capable. We are now able to do what? To bear the fruit of light as it's described in Ephesians chapter five, which is righteousness, goodness and truth. If we were to describe your life prior to Christ, we would say that you were in darkness and you were darkness. But now in Christ, you are light and you are in his light. This is who you are and this is how you need to learn to walk as a new creature. As someone completely different than what you were before. Before you were a child of wrath. Now you are a son of light. Now let's go on. I want to point out a few things here that I think is, is very important. I want to go ahead and read them. An extraordinary thing has happened to us. We are new creatures with new natures. That can no longer be described in the terms of darkness and depravity. But are now best described in terms of light, holiness, righteousness, goodness and truth. Where we were once described as creatures of darkness. We are now best described as recreations of light. This is just one of the small glimpses of what it means to be born again. This is what it means when Paul says you are a new creature. Something tremendous has happened to you. You're different. You're new. Now, why is this important? It's important for this reason. Sometimes I will come up to people and I will I will talk to them, people that I know love the Lord. People that I know are sincere in their faith. People that I can see a work of sanctification in. And I'll say to them something like, how are you doing? Or so on and so forth in the Lord. And I've heard them say to me this. Well, you know, Brother Paul, I'm just a sin loving. I just have a sin loving, God hated, God hating, dark heart. I've heard Christians say that before. But I want you to know that's not true. I'll ask them when they say that, I'll go, well, if that's true, then tell me, what did God do when he regenerated your heart? You do not have a sin loving, God hating heart. You have a new heart with new affections, and those new affections are to drive you to serve the Lord and to do his will. When you realize that. That I am a new creation. It makes you better able to live the Christian life with hope. Knowing God has done something to me. And I can obey him. And I can walk in his favor. And I can walk in his power. Because he's done something in me. I'm a different person. Another reason why this is so important. Is that when you realize that you're a new creation. And that God has given you a new heart with new affections. What will happen to you is this. You will realize that you will never, ever, ever be happy. Or satisfied or content or full of peace. If you are walking in darkness or participating in the deeds of darkness. I know I'm a new creature. And that gives me great strength against temptation. In what way? The devil came to me and said, here, do this. I know what I am now. I know that prior to coming to Christ, yes, my nature would have loved that. And if I had bitten into it, I would have delighted in it. But I'm not that same man. So if I take that temptation now, knowing that I'm a new creature, if I take that temptation, if I bite into it, what's going to happen? 
It's going to disgust me. It's going to give me everything opposite of what I'm being promised. I know, and you should know, that as new creatures, nothing in this world can delight you. The Puritans used to say something like this. If you have been born again, you have become a creature so high with affections so high that if you were to gain the whole world, it would not satisfy you. And if you were to lose the whole world, it would not bring you down. Now, let me ask you a question. Is something of that a reality in your life? Do you have a sense of this? That God has done such a work in you that you cannot delight in wickedness. That you cannot delight in darkness. That you are a child of light. That you are a son of God. Now, let's go on. He not only talks about being a son of light, but he also refers to being a son of day. And what does that mean? He's talking now about the realm in which we walk. He's not talking so much about what we are as he is talking about the realm in which we walk. There was a time when you and I walked in darkness. But now, having been converted and having been reconciled with God and having been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, we no longer walk in that realm of darkness. But in a sense, we walk in a realm of light. Of the Holy Spirit illuminating our hearts and minds. Of the presence of Christ in our life. And also the word of God. That through reading it, through meditating upon it, through studying it, you and I know what is true. We walk in the light of God's word. So we're no longer sons of darkness, but we're sons of light. And we're no longer walking in the nighttime, in the dark, stumbling. But what are we? We're walking in the light. The light of Christ's presence and the light of his word. Now, Lightfoot says this. Not only do you have an illumination of your own as God's children, but you are also living and moving in an enlightened sphere, the sphere of God's revelation. Hebert says this day is the realm in which we are now living as light possessed men. That's the realm in which we're living. So on the inside, we have been changed. We have become sons of light. No longer do we love darkness, but we love him. And then we live and walk in a sphere of light, guided by God's word, guided by his spirit. You and I are able to walk in this world circumspectly, doing the will of God, avoiding evil, clinging to what is good. 